Hello and welcome to this short video about the highball project in Loch Striven. Loch Striven is only about 15 miles from Glasgow, but its position off the Firth of Clyde and the fact that there are very few houses around the loch made it an ideal site for testing secret weapons during the Second World War and a number of weapons were tested there. These included the X-Craft midget submarines and the two-man chariot torpedoes and also the rather bizarre one-man Wellman submarine. We're particularly interested in the highball bouncing bomb. This was a spherical object approximately three feet in diameter and it consisted of a steel cylinder which held the explosive charge although we know that none of the bombs dropped in Loch Striven actually used explosives. Uh, this cylinder was padded out to a spherical shape using different sorts of padding materials and then a steel shell around the outside of that. Up the center of the explosive cylinder there was a tube and this contained a depth charge pistol and also a self-destruct fuse. The highball was carried by a mosquito bomber and it could carry two of these in tandem and they were pre-spun before being released a fraction of a second apart. Uh, the highball worked in the same way as the famous upkeep dams bomb and in fact in the Dam Busters movie when you see the shot of the bomb skipping across the water this is actually archive footage of a highball filmed on Loch Striven. What it did was to skip across the surface of the water over any anti-torpedo nets, struck the ship and then the spin carried the highball down underneath the unprotected keel of the ship where it would explode and hopefully inflict fatal damage on the ship. The key target for all of these secret weapons was the German battleship Tirpitz, which was moored in the Norwegian fjords, where it was a threat to the convoys going from Britain to Russia. In order to simulate an attack on the Tirpitz, the Navy supplied a redundant battleship which was moored in Loch Striven and it was used as a target for highball and the, uh, the submarine weapons as well. This is the French battleship that was used initially. The mosquitoes were flying from RAF Turnbury and they would have flown up the Clyde and then up Loch Striven at 60 feet, released the highball at an appropriate marker and then headed up over the hills and back to RAF Turnbury. Initially uh, it was hoped to recover the highballs using nets around the target but so many of the highballs missed and they were unable to recover them from the bottom of the lock because it was too deep so the battleship was moved from its initial position to a new position over nearer the shore where the water is about 100 feet deep and it's for this reason that the main uh, area of interest will be around this location uh, and that this is in fact where we discovered the high balls in 2010. Targets that were found in 2010 were done using a simple echolocator. Uh, some of these unfortunately turned out to be rocks about the size of a high ball. Uh, but one of them was the side charge from an X-Craft midget submarine and one of them was a large Admiralty mooring anchor with some substantial chain attached to it and it was in the region of this anchor chain that we found approximately half a dozen highballs. And these are a couple of the highballs which were found. The highballs are lying in a variety of attitudes and in a variety of conditions as well. Uh, so uh, an appropriate selection of high balls to recover will have to be made. We are going to donate the first high ball to Brooklyn's Museum in Surrey. Uh, this is where Barnes Wallace worked and they have examples of all of his other bombs on display at the moment. Nobody actually has a high ball uh, on display so that's one of the key reasons for uh, wanting to recover one. 
Uh, if we manage to get to the second, we'll go to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum in Hertfordshire because of the connection with the Mosquito. And it just remains for me to wish you good luck with your mission.